here with uh, Dr. Rajiv Dhawan, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court. Uh, sir, because you have a considerable experience in contempt of court issues, so we would like to get a uh, you know, immediate reaction from you on uh, Justice Karnan being issued uh, bailable arrest warrant. Does my expertise mean that I have been the victim of contempt of court or that I'm an expert? <laughs> Let's, let's call you a uh, legal and academic expert okay. on contempt. <laughs> yes, sir. So what would be your immediate reaction to the serving of the bail of arrest warrant today in heavy police protection? This has a history, this case. The Supreme Court should never have gone into this case. They claim that the precedent for this is a two-judge bench, judgment of K. N. Singh on the Nadiad case where a judge, district judge, was beaten up by the police. This is not the case of a district judge being beaten up or the High Court being beaten up. This is the Supreme Court simply saying that we have the power. Where did you get the power from? The Nadiat case. Now this is really quite absurd. The High Court is also uh, a court of record with the power of contempt. The Supreme Court is a court of record with the power of contempt. Supreme Court sh should limit itself to cases before it. It is not the power of the Supreme Court to discipline judges and certainly not High Court judges. So here there are two issues that are coming in. One is, you know, the Supreme Court has two sides to it. One is the administrative side mm -hmm. and the other is the judicial side. Don't you think that the two are overlapping each other in this case? Certainly not. The administrative side means that if you have problems with some judges, then administratively you can talk to them. On the basis of this, some judges resigned at the time of Justice Venkatachalaya. They were spoken to nicely and that was the end of it. Or they agreed to be transferred. The judicial side is the awesome power of the Supreme Court to issue orders of contempt which cannot be sent to a High Court judge. As simple as that. Right, sir. We are drawing a line. Uh, you are saying as it draws a clear line where a High Court judge is concerned. Uh, as far as sending a contempt of court notice is concerned. Right? No, further. Yes. I'm going further. Yes. The Supreme Court can only issue orders of contempt when it concerns its judges and its processes. Nadiad is an extra case which is without precedent and a, should remain without precedent. Right, sir. At the same time, what about Justice Karnan? When, uh, you know, transfer, he was spoken to, there, were there was a transfer order which was earlier issued to him. Then he showed reluctance to go to Calcutta High Court, but he did eventually go. But once he went, he raised the same issue and the same complaints which he had raised earlier. So, and he wrote an open letter to the PM. I mean, it was not even a letter which was sent in secret communication. I mean, so how does the public also react to, or the judiciary react to a judge such as Justice Kanan? In so far as he says the Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction, he's right. But there is no way in which he can challenge the jurisdiction of the court. From the proceedings that I saw personally, they were so biased against him that he doesn't stand a chance other than being forced to make an apology. And even after that apology, he could still be sent to jail. And even a one rupee fine is bad enough. On the other hand, Karnan has a, a penchant for drama. And in that drama, he has exceeded himself. He was right in saying, I wrote to the Prime Minister, why have you issued contempt against me? I didn't say anything about you other than certain information that I had. Now, if this was constructive contempt of the Supreme Court, I can understand. But it's not constructive contempt of the Supreme Court. It is plain and simply a something that the Chief Justice of India and his senior colleagues didn't like. That is inconsistent with the rule of law. 
So it's a matter of let's say another month and a half because I mean in middle of uh, May uh, Supreme Court also goes on vacation. Right. And so I mean you have hardly two months maybe for this mm. whole thing to unfold. But uh, at the same time, if you're talking about audacity, I mean it's unheard of. Firstly, Justice Karnan's case is unheard of. But at the same time, Justice Karnan has come back with a legal demand notice serving on a constitutional bench. I mean this is. Uh, I don't think there is precedence of this. Anywhere, least of all in a common law system such as India, it's absurd. That's all one can say. I think that the Supreme Court has acted without jurisdiction and Justice Karnan has gone to the lowest level that a judge can go to. The last and uh, a question that is... Uh, been doing the rounds, whether in public or within uh, different circles, including lawyer circles, etc., is that, you see, Justice Karnal, this whole drama which is being played out, in which he is uh, saying, uh, his behavior shows that he doesn't, he won't go down without a fight, he will go down kicking and screaming. But at the same time, what about the issues that he had raised? Because there's a question, only initially he had spoken about sexual assault by a judge, and uh, I mean, which is an old complaint, and uh, which even uh, Mr. Venugopal had raised at the Supreme Court, if you remember, when he was uh, representing the Madras High Court. Besides that, more imp very importantly, is also uh, allegation of corruption against a large number of judges, mm. which he had said. I mean, what happens to that? Because that is a, a major concern. See, you can spoil your case, even a good case, by entering into what could be regarded as vulgar hyperb hyperbole. You go over the top, you say, shouting and screaming indeed, uh, that, uh, uh, look, these people are mad, I'm going to sue them, I'm going to sue them for 14, 14 crores. You spoilt your own case. You could have simply said, these allegations have been made by me earlier, I stand by them, and left it at that. But, unfortunately, he hasn't left it at that. The option before this, uh, the country was whether he could be impeached. That is the way it is done. Some people defeated impeachment by resigning. Some people faced impeachment. And the entire South was with them in that famous Kapil Sibbal speech. And some people are tempted to go the whole hawk, as it were. Their lawyers tell them no. And eventually they take the lawyer's advice. But the problem was the Supreme Court must have realized that impeachment is a slow process. It would require the appointment of a committee. It would require Rajya Sabha members or Lok Sabha members together in saying that yes, there should be impeachment proceedings. So they took impeachment proceedings in their own hands. And there are, I mean, there are questionable uh, controversies here. But Karnan's uh, behavior is not the way a judge should behave. From a, if you were, let's say, advising Karnan, mm. what would you advise him to do at this stage? The, I wouldn't want Karnan's advice. I'm sure if he came to my office and asked me to represent him, he'd chew me up in five minutes, possibly with lots of abuse. But if we got beyond that, I would say, Mr. Karnan, you can go to the Supreme Court, you can question their jurisdiction and say you want time to prepare, take the time to prepare, and they would, it would certainly be a bad Supreme Court that says to you, you can't question their jurisdiction. He could have prolonged this, and then if it could not be prolonged further, then he could have said, look, I did whatever I did in good faith. I apologize to you in good faith. Let's leave it there for the sake of the judiciary.